Let's say you live on the seventh floor of an apartment and because it's YouTube that you have a cat. While you are watching this amazing video, your cat managed to open the window and oh, 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 she, she fell off. But hold on just one second. Let me pull up a statistic for you, me being the nerd that I am. In 1987, a study was published in the American Journal of Veterinary Medical Association by two vets. They examined 132 cases of cats falling from great heights. They found that cats fell from 5.5 stories on average, but over 90% survived. With injuries, of course. The way the finding was this. For cats that fell from higher than 7 stories, the number of injuries per cat was significantly lower. The vets concluded then that this was because the cats have longer time to orient themselves properly to the ground. This skydiving posture would then reduce their velocity tremendously, which is how they survived. Amazing, right? Okay, now you should probably stop watching this video and go check if your cat is alright. But keeping in mind the statistic that I just shared with you, your cat should be alright, right? Alas, what you find is a dead cat. Rest in peace, hypothetical cat. We will never forget you. What just happened? Apart from the dead cat, was your cat suicidal? Was the 1987 study wrong? Should we never trust the vets? Not really. While the data that the 1987 study had collected was accurate, there was a serious flaw in their conclusion that cats falling from higher than 7 stories were less hurt. For instance, your cat leapt to her death after jumping off the 7th floor. Do you take the cops to the vet or to the dumpster? Or if you are kind, have a quiet funeral inviting only your closest friends and family. Point is, you don't take a dead cat to a vet. And when these vets take all the data and analyze it, they only look at the cats that survived the fall. And to be fair, a cat that miraculously survived a 10th floor fall should be pretty special that it would have gotten less injuries. The key word here is survive. This is called the survivorship bias. It's when you ignore the subjects that fail a certain test, in this case falling off the 7th floor, and only look at the subject that succeeded or rather survived. The statistics nerds in the room are dying to bring up Abraham Wald and the World War II fighter plane, so hmm, I guess I'll talk about it. The Second World War, the era of the dogfights. As amazing as they are to watch in a movie and them inspiring dozens of other movies, it was not a good time to be a dogfighter during the Second World War. The odds of a fighter pilot surviving close combat action with another fighter pilot was equivalent to calling heads in a coin toss. The US Air Force was trying everything they could to try and decrease the casualties for two reasons. One, they were losing good fighter pilots and two, Planes are expensive. The first solution they came up with was to add more armor to the entire plane but then realized that doing so would make the plane too heavy and practically incapable of taking off. Afterwards, they had the bright idea to do the following. Once a plane returned from battle, they would record the location that the bullet holds on the plane. They would do this for each and every plane that returned and after a while they could figure out which regions of the plane were being shot at the most. Therefore, instead of trying to add more armor to the entire plane, they would only add armor to the regions that were more susceptible to the bullets. Genius, right? Except. Not really. As a statistician Abraham Wald pointed out to the Air Force, the locations of the bullet holes that they had recorded were from the planes that survived the battle. In other words, the planes that were shot in locations that were not recorded were precisely the ones that didn't return from the battle. So his solution, quite counterintuitively, was to add armor to the regions that were found to be unscathed in the planes that returned. And guess what? It worked. All Wald had done was take into account the survivorship bias and it had dramatically changed the landscape of aerial one-on-one -on -one battles. Also remember, this is the Second World War, where the country with the strongest air power stood victorious. But that's a video for another day. Okay, fine, I hear you saying. What's the big deal? As it turns out, survivorship bias is a tiny detail that has a tendency to derail decision making. I present to you my final example, the successful entrepreneur effect. We have heard a lot of successful people sharing their secrets to success. Mostly this is what they all say. Focus on doing what I did and you will be as successful as I am. We hear this the most when we hear stories about the tech giants of today, or the dropped out garage corporations as I call them. Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, dropped out of college and started Apple in his garage with his friend Steve Wozniak. Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, dropped out of college and started Microsoft with his friend Paul Allen. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, dropped out of a well paying job in New York and started Amazon in his garage without friends. Point is, the theme here is more or less the same. Step 1. Drop out of a well-paying career or drop out of college. Step 2. Go back to your garage and start building the next big thing. Step 3. Uh, hmm. Step 4. Profit. These steps to success, as absurd as they sound now, is something a lot of college students do. They drop out of college following their role models. After all, they were perfectly all right after doing that and they went on to invent something amazing which made them rich, famous and powerful. What you don't ever, ever hear 
or the number of failures. You never hear about the number of people who follow these very steps and fail because they are silent or they have been silenced. Any event or process that leaves behind survivors, the non-survivors are either destroyed, like the planes that didn't return or the cats that died, or removed from your view, like every single failed startup all along the Silicon Valley. The more we ignore failures, the more we pay attention to the successes. And our brain, being a foolish inference engine it is, tends to extrapolate the frequency of successes to being plenty more than what it really is, to such an extent we don't even consider the failures. In conclusion, making a decision purely based on those that succeeded is a terrible way to make decisions. So next time you have to make a decision, whether it's about buying stocks from the stock market, choosing a career, or heck, even throwing a cat from the 7th floor, keep in mind the fact that your brain is easily fooled by numbers and that survivorship bias is the greatest human enemy. Also that it was this YouTube video that steered you away from making stupid decisions, so I don't know, in return, like, share, subscribe? I don't know, I can't market well. Thanks for watching this video.